Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, we have been on Fedora now for about two weeks, and so I thought it was time to give my my overall thoughts and impressions and things. And uh, so I guess what we're going to do is let's start up by looking at our system information so you guys can get a better view as to what we're looking at here. So I'm running Fedora uh, 29 with KDE Plasma version 5.14.4. Uh, kernel is 419, and we are on an AMD A8 5500 APU with Radeon HD graphics, which is utilizing one gig of my six gigs of RAM. And so this is the system that we are reviewing this on, and I, I'm really pleased to report that once I got the system up and running, which is not nearly as easy as it is on other distros, once it was up and running, it was actually running just fine. I haven't had any real seriously notable issues. There have been a couple, and uh, we'll kind of get into those. So, of course, the way I have mine themed up, I kind of have mine set up as a grayscale-like uh, setup. You may or may not like this, this way of setting it up, but it is what I was looking for for this type of build. So, of course, if you're just not liking the look of it, just understand that I really modified the styles on this. Uh, just to be what I kind of wanted. So, of course, on um, these applications, most things are grayscale, but you'll find some things that are not grayscale, just didn't have the application windows. I put my calendar. I was not actually able to work with the usual weather application that I, I usually use on KDE for whatever reason. I think it, it was still there, but it wouldn't work in the same size constraints. It, it gave me a lot of bugs. So that's probably a negative that it did give me a little bit different experience than other versions of this I've run. It might be that I'm gonna encounter those issues on future versions of other builds because this is running some of the latest things. Uh, as far as everything else, um, I did also have some early issues with some of the web browsers. So usually I would be using Chromium for my YouTube things. I was not able to do that because for whatever reason, Chromium last I checked still was not working with all of the video types. So I'm actually using Waterfox for YouTube connections. I'm using Firefox for everything else on this build. There are a couple of other web browsers built in. None of those actually worked every on every video with YouTube either. Now, some of this is probably due to the codex. So here we're going to talk briefly about some um, uh, differences between uh, Fedora in its native build, which would be GNOME, and this KDE build, which is more of a community spin. And uh, I wanted to do this one because while well, I was running GNOME for about a month or so on Linux Mint Debian Edition, and I wanted to go back to KDE, primarily I was interested in testing if Kodi was going to work right with it or not, because I did have some issues with that. And uh, we'll kind of get into that uh, in a bit. Uh, but with this, the one of the things that, that was a lot harder getting this one set up as the GNOME version is the GNOME version as of Fedora 29 has really gone a long way into making sure that it's easy to add your non-free uh, codecs and other repositories, which is your RPM fusion type stuff. Now, the problem is on the KDE build is those are still not... They're not built in as well as they are built into the GNOME, so you still have to install them all, uh, all manually. And so once I got them all installed, everything was working a little bit better, but it wasn't as easy as just one or two lines. There were a few codecs that were missing. For example, I installed VLC and I still couldn't play DVDs even after installing all of the codecs available through RPM Fusion. There ended up being another RPM Fusion that I needed, and I'm trying to see if I can spot it here. Um, let's see, there's the free one, uh, the Tainted. It was the free Tainted. This one did not get installed. I had to get this running to install the DVD codecs so I could actually watch DVDs on uh, uh, VLC. I'm not sure what the Tainted is. It just sounds a little tainted to me. But anyway, um, I had to do a little extra steps to get the all of the different RPM uh, Fusion codecs in there. And uh, once those got in there, then everything seemed to be working a little bit better. So it'd be curious to know if that is working correctly with Chromium now as well. But I don't really like the direction Chromium's going, so Waterfox is a better alternative for that anyway. Of course, I need to jump onto something else to use Hangouts if I need to for 
any of the collaborations. As far as everything else, um, I've done a little bit of work on GIMP. I did discover what appears to be a bug on GIMP. And I actually first saw this on my main production build where I threw GIMP 2.10 on there um, because uh, I had some images that were done in GIMP 2.10 and GIMP is not backwards compatible, which is kind of silly. So I installed 2.10, but one of the factors that I use on nearly all of my videos is em uh, embossing or like beveling rather uh, text layers. And uh, that actually does not seem to be working. So I was wondering if that had, if that was an issue because of, um, uh, if that was an issue because the other build was uh, a flat pack or not. So I come over here and onto this. And if I go ahead and just enter some text like this and let's make it bold, let's go ahead and make it bigger. And if I come up here and go down to my artista, was it decor, add bevel. This is exactly the process that I do on 2.10. Um, two, uh, it's trying to bevel it, but it never actually bevels my text. This is very sad because I use beveled text. Um, this seems to be a bug on GIMP overall. Um, doesn't have anything to do with Fedora. Like I said, I first saw that on Linux Mint and I wanted to see is that because it's a flat pack, whatever else. So uh, other than that, everything on GIMP seemed to work fine. Of course, I did some things with Libre Writer and Calc, uh, particularly doing some things like uh, some preliminary um, mail merging type things uh, for somebody that asked about that. I did all that on this system, which worked out very well. I have Evolution and Thunderbird installed and everything installed perfectly fine. Uh, there is a Skype build for this. You have to download it directly from uh, Skype's website. But once you do that, it adds itself to the repo and works perfectly fine. So I haven't had any issues with that. Now this brings us kind of to the negatives is that Skype and a few other places, I actually had some, some issues trying to get my sound working with Skype. Some of that could be KDE because KDE is always a little bit goofy and that there's there's two things. You can click on this guy here to do some quick things with your audio, but then you also could go into this screen and then do some adjustments with audio. And I could never quite get Skype working yet. Um, so that's kind of one of the things. It's possible I just haven't had a time to get it working right. Uh, so I'm not sure if that's gonna be a long term. Now the other thing and the reason I went with Fedora and the KDE version of Fedora is I wanted to see how does Cody interact with Plasma on Fedora. Because on my Linux Mint 18.3, which is the traditional Linux Mint running KDE, I have zero problems going back and forth between Cody and the desktop. But on both my Debian build and my Linux Mint Debian edition, I had issues where if I would load up Cody and leave, a good percentage of the time, I'd probably say about 30% of the time, so three out of 10 times, it would fail to go back to the desktop. I would have to shut down the computer to actually close it down, which caused seriously some issues. I wanted to see if that was a, a problem with Kodi and Plasma, or if it was a problem with Kodi, Plasma, and Debian. So when I installed this um, and ran it the first couple times, Kodi actually did foul up a few times. But after running some se some sequential updates, I have not actually observed that error on on Cody for probably about a week and a half or so. So after some fighting with it, Cody seems to work just fine. VLC now seems to work just fine. Uh, Waterfox is a good replacement for Chromium, which I might just go ahead and keep doing in the future anyway, so I don't have to deal with um, deal with Google's insanity and trying to auto log me in. And then uh, Firefox is working just fine. And I really haven't had any other issues. So overall, my thought is if you do not have any issues with 
taking the time and setting the system up and making it your own and getting everything in there you need to get in there, remove the things you need to remove from there. If you don't have any issue with that, then absolutely I would say that Fedora is a wonderful build. Now it is not for the beginner as it is not nearly as easy. You can't just install it and then be up and running. There's always going to be some extra things you're going to do. As I said earlier, the GNOME version has taken care of a lot of those and make this a lot simpler but the KDE version uh, is is certainly worth the go if you like Fedora and you like plasma absolutely it's certainly uh, something worth it I've never uh, well let's let's rephrase that after I got the DVD codecs to work I haven't had to drop out of it I had to, to drop out of this into my Linux mint build um, before I was able to get the, the uh, DVD playback to work. But now that that's working, everything seems to be just fine. And so that has been my experience. Overall, um, I will recommend this, but not for new users. If you're a new user, I would steer clear of any build of Fedora. It's going to be more, more complicated. It's not going to work quite as well out of the box. It works wonderfully once you have everything set up. It's just it will take a little bit of time to get everything set up and you will have to go into the terminal and you'll have to read a little bit of documentation and look for ways to solve your problems. But if that doesn't frighten you at all, then Fedora um, is an excellent build and I had a lot of good experiences with, uh, with Plasma here. And uh, I don't know, I'll wipe it out eventually here. I'm not in a mad dash to wipe it out, but uh, at the same time, um, I wanted to get this review video out of the way so that, um, uh, so that I can wipe it out if I if I get a, a moment's time to do so. Uh, as far as uh, for anyone curious about my theming here, let's just go ahead and have a quick look at our theming. So it looks like I'm using Breeze Dark. I'm using uh, Breeze as the desktop theme, Basic Breeze as the cursor. I've left this um, untouched. Colors, I'm using my Breeze Dark. And for my icons, I am using Clarity are the icons, which look to be based on papyrus, just kind of grayscaled papyrus type icons, it looks like to me. Uh, I could be wrong about that, but that's what it seems like. And this is, again, exactly what I wanted to go for. Um, definitely not everybody's taste for sure. There were a few modifications I needed to do. I'll mention that now. Uh, there was actually an icon for Skype. There was not a grayscale icon for either Cody or Waterfox. So what I did with those is I actually built those. I simply opened up the existing icons and then just grayscaled them. Actually, the Cody I did a little bit different, and I was like, that was stupid. I should have just grayscaled them. That's what I did for uh, for Waterfox. I just opened up the native Waterfox icon and then just grayscaled it on GIMP, resaved it here, and then I saved it in my custom icons. So if you actually go system-wide and look for things, you will find that they're not um, uh, they're not colored so you'll see that Cody uh, is still the blue one and Waterfox I never actually installed that system wide so it's not installed on the menu those would be so if you load it up if you load, were to load up Waterfox you would see it would be the blue icon uh, like simple screen recorder it's colored but on the menu here you can just right click this hit your properties click on your icon and then tell it where to go to look for your other icons in my case, I went to other icons, browsed for it, custom icons, and there it was. So that's how you would do that. So that way I got a consistent looking desktop, uh, but I don't really care once the application is open. That's okay either way. So that's kind of a little bit about the build, how it worked. Uh, it's been working great. Like I said, you just have to do that extra couple steps. Uh, find those other repos that you need. Make sure everything is installed, and then we are set to go. So hopefully uh, this was a uh, fascinating little take for you on Fedora and or Plasma. Definitely a distro worth checking out, but please don't do it if you're too new to Linux because it could frustrate you. So thanks for coming along and hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.